Thanks for joining us for the Mobile Midday News. I'm Stormy O'Donnell. Today's show is brought to you by TelecomCareers.com. Now, Auction 97 topped $37 billion this morning through round 36, and Sprint is changing up its iPhone for Life plan again. For more on those two stories, here's RCR Editor-in-Chief Dan Meyer. Thanks, guys. Yes, indeed, Sprint has uh, remained pretty aggressive on its uh, iPhone pricing, uh, coming out recently with a new 30-month lease option for customers and its iPhone for Life plan. Uh, the plan basically lets customers uh, extend uh, payments on the on an iPhone device over a longer period of time, over the previous 12 and 24 months. Uh, basically equals a couple bucks uh, less per month for customers on those plans. Uh, customers still need to sign up for one of the iPhone for Life rate plans, which uh, are $50 a month for unlimited services for the 24-month uh, and 30-month plans, or $60 per month for the 12-month uh, plan. But again, this just kind of keeps us Sprint's aggressiveness going when it comes to their iPhone offering. Obviously, with the launch of the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus back in September, uh, Sprint put a lot of uh, money and marketing behind that. So Sprint's uh, remaining aggressive on that and has said that it will stay aggressive in terms of marketing moving forward. So again, a pretty good good, good move for Sprint there. Uh, also on the uh, Spectrum auction front, uh, the auction uh, ended today at just over $38 billion in total bids. Uh, the auction will now take a four-day break for the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, scheduled to pick back up on Monday, uh, first thing in the morning with uh, four new rounds of bidding that day. Uh, each bid, uh, each round, uh, an hour long. Uh, the auction has, has has definitely been a pretty rest over the past couple of weeks since since starting, uh, and the big big winner still seems to be the New York City license, the J Block license, which is 20 megahertz, which is now close to 2.5 billion dollars in total bids, or about six times more than what a similar license went for back in the AWS One auction back in uh, 2006. Uh, the auction right now is through round 38. Uh, it's expected that uh, that the auction. Uh, could last a bit, a bit longer. Uh, recent auctions have gone uh, more than 160 rounds, so we could still be in for quite a, quite a bit more bidding here in the in the auction. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dan. And in other news today, the iPhone has other device manufacturers scrambling. Tech writer Martha DeGrasse explains. Thanks, Stormy. We are seeing a lot of discounts this weekend. Amazon Fire Phone and the BlackBerry Passport. Let's talk about the Passport first. This is BlackBerry's new square screen smartphone. There's a square touch screen, and then the famous BlackBerry keyboard is underneath that. And the off-contract price is now at $500. BlackBerry has been struggling lately, as you know. The Fire Phone is another story. Amazon really had big expectations for this phone, and so did a lot of other people. But now we're seeing it discounted more than 50%. The Fire Phone is $200 now, and if you get Amazon Prime, it's only $100. The biggest thing about the Fire Phone is the way that it helps Amazon. It points you directly to items that you may want to buy and brings them right up on your phone so that you can buy them right away. Could be useful this holiday. But the real story here is that everybody is trying to scramble to compete with the iPhone. As we all know, iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus sales have exceeded expectations. Apple is actually struggling to meet demand for that phone. And its competitors are worried. And in the Android space, in the Windows space, BlackBerry especially is worried. And operators need to pay attention to this because data shows that the iPhone is the phone that's really going to increase that, uh, that LTE data usage. Statistics do show that iPhone users use more LTE data than users of other phones. Now, that may be because it's just a higher de demographic and those people can afford more data. But whatever the reason, operators need to pay attention to, to what phones people are buying and what phones people are getting this holiday season. Thank you, Martha. And we've also been following some big stories all morning. American Tower appears to be on a spending streak. They've spent more than $2 billion. They've just announced that they're buying 4,800 towers from Barty Airtel in Nigeria for more than a billion dollars. Now, this is the second big deal this week for American Tower. As RCR reported, the company announced they are buying 4,800 towers from Telecom Italia in Latin America. Now, for more on that story, check out rcrwireless.com. Now, Deutsche Telekom and Orange are in talks with BT over the sale of their jointly owned consumer network, EE. Now, EE is the UK's largest mobile network operator. They have around one-third of the network. And a little competition never hurt. Earlier this week, BT announced that it was also in preliminary talks with Telefonica UK. Now, switching gears to our analyst angle stories, RCR's Jeff Mucci has a daily wrap. Thank you, Stormy. Today we have two analyst angle contributed articles on rcrwireless.com. The first... According to Pam McGill and Greg Mishkin from Market Strategies International, uh, phones are becoming luxuries and carriers are becoming commodities. 
This trend is a result of carriers unlocking the phones and requiring subscribers to pay full price for the phone. While the carriers are increasing their bottom line by not having to pay for subsidies, subscribers are free to move from one carrier to the other. The second analyst angle is from Julie Bradford from UK-based consulting firm Real Wireless. And she says that 5G may finally unleash the potential of dynamic spectra sharing and cognitive radio technologies that were developed by ARPA and the Next Generation Communication Program. The NetNet white space wireless may get a boost from 5G. For more information on our analyst angle programs, please visit rcrwireless.com. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. And for another great story, check out tech writer Jeff Hahn's report on buying into the Internet of Things and the growing number of devices we now interact with on a daily basis. You'll find it at rcrwireless.com. And we'll be here every day recapping all the big stories that we're covering over at rcrwireless.com. And that's it for today. This program was brought to you by telecomcareers.com.